Hey, Doc Robin here. Welcome to your energy update for the week of March 20th, 2023. Today is a new moon. We've had the spring equinox. I think it was yesterday. Today's my nephew's birthday as well. Love that kid. He's 12. Luke. Shout out to Luke. And um, since it's a new moon, I want to share with you kind of a process that I go through for planting seeds on the new moon. One of the things I think is really important to look at right now for us, for those of us who are intuitive and intelligent, and we're really wanting to create a new world for ourselves and other people. So we have to look at where are we channeling the status quo? One of the things I said last week on the first episode of my new podcast, Becoming a Channel, was that for a long time, I channeled the status quo out of kind of not wanting to rock the boat and thinking I was doing the right thing. I don't have a lot of judgment about that. It just is what I happened to be doing at the time in my career. And until I really was able to separate who I was, who I, who I truly am from the expectations, the duties, the responsibilities of the people around me and the, the, the roles that I had taken on in my life, um, it was a little bit of a crunchy game for me to try to be myself and also meet the expectations of everybody else. And I found freedom in being able to step into like who I truly am, which is an intuitive channel among other things. And to just be able to be myself as much as I can, you know, I'm also a STEM girl. My undergrads in biology and I worked in the pharmaceutical industry and biotech for a long time. And some of my favorite clients are female engineers and physicians who are also grown-up smart girls who happen to be very intuitive as well, and yet a lot of times put their intuition behind the scenes, kind of keep it in the closet, don't talk too much about it because we don't want to be weird in the, in the workplace. But I have to tell you, I think that now more than ever before, this is the safest time for us to come out of the closet as intuitives and as people who have access to subtle energy and non-physical energy. So the more that I do this, the more I talk about new moon energy and equinox and some of these more esoteric concepts that my science colleagues might roll their eyes at. I'm just at a point in my career and in my life where I don't care. I'm just going to do what works for me. And setting intentions on a new moon is one of my favorite things to do. I have been known to go get my nails polished on a new moon just as a way to remind myself of the new moon energies. But I kind of like my sparkles this week. So I think that I'll just activate those for new moon energy as well. Maybe you can do the same. Hey, by the way, if you're here with me live, say hi in the comments. Let me know that you're here. If you're watching the recording and this, this information lands for you, let me know. This really helps me be of higher service to you as well. When we interact, when we have a conversation in social media about what's going on and what you're taking away, super helpful. So when I'm setting my intentions on a new moon, I just think about the new moon as a metaphor, a blank slate that I can write whatever it is that I want to write on it. So I have to decide what I'm gonna write. But before I even get there, I need to make sure that my slate is pristine. So I have to do some energy clearing around that. I might smudge using sage or Palo Santo is another of my favorite um, smokes that I like to use to, to clear my space. I sometimes take a saltwater bath, um, but I always make sure that I just have a clear field going into this. And then I'll just tune in and just ask, what is the feeling that I want to experience first? What is the feeling that I want to experience? How do I want to feel in this next month? It could be a feeling of freedom. It could be a feeling of joy, elation, groundedness. So one of the first things that you can do is ask yourself, how do you want to feel? What's the feeling that you want to cultivate? What's the feeling that you want to channel this month? Once I decide on that, then I can ask, okay, Given that I want to feel that I want to channel joy, what are the great, greatest expressions of joy that I could imagine creating this month? Maybe it's a new podcast for me. Maybe it's a new program that I'm going to be announcing. 
Maybe it's a guest spot on somebody else's podcast. But there are myriad ways that I can express that joy, that I can articulate that joy in my business and in my life. So I think about those ways, as, those things as well. What I want to create. And then maybe I tie it to specific outcomes. Now, some of it, I don't always like to do that because I think that sometimes we sell ourselves short on the outcomes. But I can ask myself too, how will I know when I've hit this? How will I have, well, how will I know when I've manifested or when the manifestation drops in? What will tell me those things? If I wave the magic wand over my life, how will I know what will be different when this is manifested? So you can ask yourself those things today even. I would just say set, set aside some time, some sacred time, just between you and you, where you can just get real quiet and pay attention to what's going on in the here and now for you. And if you feel yourself getting all knotted up about what's going on and if I'm going to make my goals and feeling all of the pressure of that, I just want you to take a step back for a second. I guess on TikTok the other day, there was a video that went viral around your words make a difference. Your words matter. And it's true. The words that we say to ourselves do help to create our experiences. Negative words can create symptoms of stress and anxiety and chronic stress and anxiety actually pinches off your capacity to channel wealth consciousness, not to mention it pinches off your capacity to feel good and to create the life that you really want for yourself. So there's a good case for speaking positively to yourself and to speaking life into the world, into your world. But your words are only part of the puzzle. We also have your emotions. Like you can say things that you want to have happen. You can create affirmations and mantras. But if there's part of you who doesn't believe it or who doesn't feel aligned with it, your words lose their potency. So you have to get your emotions on board with your words as well. And then after that, it becomes aligned action that you take on the other side of getting your words and your emotions connected and lined up. So that's kind of the meta level understanding of doing a new moon ceremony to create something new, to plant some new seeds for, for the coming month. I just wanted to share that with you. I think it's important for us to take a look at how we can be nicer to ourselves, how we can be kinder to ourselves and how we can speak life into our own hearts and into the people that we care about the most. All right. So with that, let's, I've got my, this week, I'm using the spirit animal Oracle from one of my favorites, Colette Baron Reed. I love her. And I love these cards. So let's see. What are we dealing with this week? This one. The guides here. I love my animal spirit guides. Do you guys have animal spirit guides? Who's your, who are your animal spirit guides? I have a bear, a grizzly bear. He's been with me for a long, long time. I have an eagle and a hawk a heron. I have a lot of winged ones. Of course, my name is Robin. So that's probably to no great surprise. I have a giraffe. So what do we have today? The first one we have is lizard spirit, which is actually pretty perfect for the new moon. It's the message is to dream the world into being. Dream your world into being. And then we have, oh, we have some good ones today. We have, this one was next, Dragonfly Spirit, which is a transformation card. And this one is Truth trans Transcends Illusion. We live in a world of illusion. Hollywood is an illusion, creates illusions. Disney creates illusions. When you start asking yourself the question, where am I living in illusion? and you are open to seeing the truth, the illusion can collapse. And that's when you have the power restored to you to be able to create the real 
true world for yourself without illusion. Illusion is actually unnecessary when you are a creative, divine, and eternal being of love, light, and truth. We have no need for illusion because we can create the reality that far outstrips any illusion. But first you have to be willing to look for, to be, to allow the illusions to be revealed to you. Where am I living in illusion? And make the decision to collapse the illusion and to create the real tangible world for yourself. All right. And dragonfly spirit can help you with that. The next one we have is nightingale spirit, which is here to tell you, to remind you that love is all around you. And anytime you see something that is not of love, you can know that it is an illusion. It is designed to create fear. It is designed to create disconnection and is designed to continue to hold you in servitude. When you collapse the illusion and you begin to see that love is actually all around you, love is infused in everything, everything, God is love. Love is foundational. And the reminder here today, as you sit to create your new moon intentions, is to do so from the perspective of love. And the last one is White Raven. White Raven, look at, oh, where is that? Okay. White Raven says, trust in the magic. Trust in your own magic. Trust in the co-creative magic of the universe to support you, to shore you up, but also to allow you to transcend your current reality. I think the most powerful decision that you can make today is to stop channeling the status quo. Stop channeling the status quo. It's boring. And all it does is create the same thing over and over and over again. So how do we stop challenging the status quo? Do something different. Dance. Leave your home office. Put down your screen. Put down your, put down your phone. Go out and live in the world. Go out and touch and feel and see and breathe. Go play with your puppy. Engage your senses. Engage your imagination. And the status quo will not stand a chance. But if you find yourself doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting some kind of different outcome, you are fooling yourself. And all you're really truly doing is grounding even deeper into the status quo. Keeping yourself stuck on the same gerbil wheel rather than freeing yourself from the gerbil wheel and being able to fly like the white raven. So trust your magic, trust the magic of the universe. And you can, you can ask the guides to give you signs, to pay attention. So pay attention because they will give you signs. Don't wait for a sign or sign. Just pay attention and say, thank you. Thank you for that sign. All right. That is your energy report for the week. If you are somebody who feels like you're ready to work with me privately. I want you to start the process by going to my website, www.drrobinmckay.com forward slash call. Sorry about that. And um, so drrobinmckay.com forward slash call is the place that you go and book a private call with me. Um, I work with accomplished intuitive, intelligent people who are spiritual entrepreneurs, physicians, engineers, who are burned out, who are ready to learn how to channel something other than the status quo, including wealth consciousness for prosperity on all levels. I have a couple of private openings in my calendar for my Becoming the Channel program, which is a year-long program. And um, one of those is probably for you if you're listening and you're feeling aligned with it. So start the process and 
book a call with me and let's have a conversation. All right. And I will see you all next week. Stay tuned. Our next episode for the Becoming the Channel podcast is dropping later this week. So you'll have firsthand info about that in our Facebook group. And I will see you next week.